Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Manns and I'd like to welcome you to the April 4th Coalition Show. This is the April 10th, 2023 edition of the show and has been 448 shows that we have done since the closing of the North Adams Regional Hospital. The April 4th Coalition's mission statement is, we are for workers' rights and collective bargaining rights and are against tax breaks for the rich and corporations who ship our jobs overseas. We support all the articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but as is the custom, we put the emphasis on Article 23 at the start of the show. All right, we'll start with number one. Everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and protection against unemployment. Number two, everyone, without any discrimination, has the right to equal pay for equal work. Number three, everyone, who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration ensuring for himself or herself and his or her family an existence worthy of human dignity, human dignity and supplemented if necessary by other means of social protection. Number four, everyone has the right to form and join trade unions for protection of her or his interests. At this time, we also give a shout out to Michael Putnam who is the Public Access Radio Program Director for airing our show on Fridays at 6 p.m., at least the audio portion. And I believe the call tag number is WMNBLP 107.1. And to the Public Access TV crew for their assistance in helping us produce this show. Okay. Well, here we are. We're, uh, We're one week past the April 4th, and you wanted... I want to backtrack Check a, little a little because last week we were talking about the uh, anniversary of the April 4th coalition. Correct. And uh, we also talked about the anniversary of the closing of, of the, the hospital. hospital. But we neglected but we, one. No, we neglected to say why we have the name the April 4th, 4th coalition. coalition. And it's because uh, the April 4th was the anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King in mm -hmm. 1968. Mm -hmm. So we thought in order to backtrack a little bit, we'd show a video of, of Martin Luther King, the speech, the, a very prophetic speech that he made the night before his assassination. Mm -hmm. He was shot with, by was a shot. rifle uh, in, in Memphis, Tennessee. And so well, let's listen to this speech that he made on April 3rd. Mm -hmm. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. <laughs> If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. And so just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. 
I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I don't think any of us can be satisfied in the United States until that war is brought to an honorable end and American soldiers are brought back here to the United States of America. One day, we will have to stand before the God of history and we will talk in terms of things we've done. And it seems that I can hear the God of history saying, that was not enough. But I was hungry, and he fed me not. Wow. Oh, yeah. It, it sends chills. It <laughs> does, know. when you think about what's going on you now. Know, it sends chills, just, just a prophetic speech, and also, you know, we're and af so cool. after the day after Easter, so a Christian celebration of sure. Easter. Um, it's also, you know, part of Passover mm -hmm. and the, the thought of the promised land that was, uh, you know, a remembrance, you know, of, of, of what the Passover feast was about, was, was remembering. About the promised land, that yeah, you about, get to the promised land. Yeah, and then it's also where Ramadan is also taking place during this period too. Mm -hmm. um, so. And remarkably, they all have the same goal, ultimately. Yeah. Right, and, but to think of Martin Luther King standing up for nonviolence, and then he's gunned down mm -hmm. in Tennessee. He was there for... Uh, there was a sanitation strike. Yes, right. he was there for collective bargaining rights right. for sanitation workers in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. He was there in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I learned this week is I didn't, I didn't know this, but Tennessee is the birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that, but it's ironic that that's where Martin Luther King was assassinated. The reason why I know that it's the birthplace, or I learned that it was the birthplace of, uh, of, of the Ku Klux Klan, I was reminded of it as I was watching what transpired in the mm -hmm. Tennessee House of Representatives. Uh, it, take you back a, a few weeks, mm -hmm. there was a, a slaying of six people by a, a, a person with an assault rifle mm -hmm. in Six nine year, uh, three nine year olds and three were staff. killed, and three staff members were killed. And uh, in Tennessee, they have the loosest uh, gun laws. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't even need a permit to carry, yeah. and, and you they don't were have just they were anymore. Re and they were uh, the representatives were considering uh, a bill that would allow anyone over the age of eighteen mm -hmm. to to be able to carry without a permit, you know. Oh, any, well, I thought it was younger, I thought it was 16. No, 18, 18, 18. yeah, okay. it's 21 now, and they were reducing it to 18. And there were t three representatives that stood with the students that were protesting mm -hmm. uh, against that, and they want, they want to ban assault rifles. But anyways, uh, we're gonna show a video, it's a BBC report of what's just transpired in Tennessee the place where Martin Luther King, the state where Martin Luther King was assassinated by a, by a rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hear what's happening in, in, in Tennessee now. Republican legislators in the U.S. state of Tennessee have voted to expel two Democrat members from the regional House of Representatives. It comes after they took part in a protest for stricter gun laws. Justin Jones and Justin Pearson were ousted, but a third Democrat, Gloria Johnson, narrowly survived the vote. Last week, hundreds of demonstrators marched to the state capitol after six people died in a school shooting in Nashville. One of the expelled politicians has been speaking to BBC News about what happened. I'm actually here in my office, um, you know, starting to pack up um, because the state legislature, the Republican majority, took the very unprecedented and extreme move to expel the two youngest black lawmakers in the state of Tennessee. Um, I represent a part of Nashville where just a week ago we had a mass shooting that, that killed six people, including three nine-year-olds. And 
the first step my colleagues took was not to pass common sense gun laws, but to ban us for standing with those young people, thousands of young people who've been protesting for the past week demanding um, a ban to these weapons of war um, on the streets of our community. Justin, I just want to make sure I understood that correctly. Expelled means you lose your seat. So you're packing your stuff up right now. You have to leave? I have to leave. They've shut off my ID badge already. Um, so they shut off my access to the building. I had to get another former colleague to let me in. Um, they shut off my email access. And so I'm no longer a legislator. That means that the 78,000 people from District 52 have no representation in the state of Tennessee. 78,000 voters. I represent the most diverse district in the state of Tennessee. I'm here in Nashville, uh, District 52. And now they're left without a voice because of the decision of an extreme Republican supermajority, which is almost completely a white you know, caucus, expelling the two youngest black lawmakers because we stood demanding action on gun violence. Justin, you expected Republican lawmakers to take action. Are you surprised that they, they voted to expel you and your fellow lawmaker? I think the nation and the world are, are surprised and should be shocked because what they said is that democracy does not matter in Tennessee. Um, they took a very extreme step. There's only been three expulsions in the House in Tennessee history, um, all involving crimes or an ethical behavior. This is the first expulsion for First Amendment activity for a, a, a breach of decorum, they said, violating decorum rules. Um, no, even you know, members who've been here, former members I've talked to, no one has ever heard of a, a breach of decorum rule resulting in expulsion. It's the most extreme uh, measure because it doesn't only silence us, but it, it's really about silencing our district. And like I said, my district is 78,000 people who have no voice, no representation. Right. Um, that's what they did. So I want to ask you about what Republican lawmakers have said, because they have said that you broke rules of decorum and staged a mutiny. And we actually have a clip from the House caucus chair from the legislature. I want to, I want to play that for you right now. We've called them out. The chairman of committees, the Speaker of the House have been calling them out time and time again for grabbing the mic, sucking the air out of the room, making sure no other voice is heard. And finally, when they come and, and, and act so foolish on the House floor, this is a sacred place that belongs to everybody, and literally start looking up into the gallery with a bullhorn, getting the protesters worked up into a frenzy, that is incumbent on us to say, you've gone a step too far, and we're going to take steps to make sure that if you ever do come back, if you get reelected, that you know it's a serious thing to Tennesseans. Justin, did you and your fellow lawmaker take it a step too far, as we heard there? No, I mean, we have spent the whole session being silent, not able to speak. And so what led up to this point was that that whole week, again, I represent a part of Nashville, a community that is mourning, a community that is traumatized. We couldn't even talk about the issue of gun violence um, because this legislature was passing laws to arm teachers, to make it easier to get a gun than it is to vote or to get help. Healthcare. This is a very uniquely American problem where we have these constant mass shootings at an elementary school in Nashville, and our colleagues wouldn't even let us talk about the issue of gun violence. All they let us do is offer moments of silence. But what we said is that we're tired of moments of silence. And so when we spoke on the House floor to try and speak about this, the speaker cut off our microphone. When I went out to stand with the protesters, with the, those protesting, he shut down my voting machine, so I couldn't even vote for a while. Um, this is a very extreme reaction from a body that has spent the whole session trying to silence any voice of dissent or opposition. And if I didn't know that this happened to me, I would not think that this was America. This sounds like, you know, this is this is not this is autocracy, and it's very scary that this Republican supermajority has silenced us, has silenced our voters for standing up not trying to call for violence, but calling for the exact opposite, the end to gun violence. We were calling for action so that we can stop our young people and our children from being murdered and massacred. That's what we were okay. calling for from the House floor. So you and your fellow expelled lawmaker, Justin Pearson, you are two young black representatives. Your fellow Democrat, Democrat rather, Gloria Johnson, she also uh, took part in this protest. She was not expelled. Republican legislators are saying this is not about race. What's your response to that? I mean, Gloria said it herself. Gloria said the only difference is our skin color, that they expelled the two youngest black lawmakers. Their caucus of 75 members, the Republican caucus in Tennessee, has only one non-white member. And this whole session, they've made us feel unwelcome. Um, they, they, they've talked about, you know, that we should not, you know, t talk about systemic racism, that we cannot be our, our full authentic selves and represent our diverse districts. And so this is clearly racism from um, the Republican caucus and Speaker Cameron Sexton in particular, who really was the force and hand behind pushing this expulsion vote. So you've now lost your seat and your aim was to achieve some sort of progress on gun reform. What are your plans now for achieving that reform now that you're out of office? 
I mean, we had thousands of young people there who are going to return on Monday. And, and now, whether I'm inside the chamber, outside the chamber, I'm going to stand with them and demand that my colleagues act. Because what we were calling for was a ban on assault weapons, these weapons of war. And what they responded with was an assault on democracy. And that's shameful. Um, you know, I don't think in, in England people can buy an AR-15, you know, but here in Tennessee, they can easily buy AR-15 much it's much easier to do that than it is to vote or to get health care. And that's shameful. And this is a uniquely American problem. And as someone who's young, this is something that's defined our generation, these school shootings from Sandy Hook to Uvalde to now um, here in Nashville at Covenant Elementary School. It is shameful. And, and we in Tennessee need to act because we've done the opposite. They're beholden to these special interest groups like the NRA, that they won't listen to the voices of these young people and the voices of our constituents. And that's shameful. You and your fellow expelled lawmaker, Justin Pearson, what happens for you next? Do you have to run for your seats again? Um, so there's a, a process where the council can um, appoint, you know, a special election. And I know my council, um, you know, I was already getting messages. You know, I think the mayor posted about it of Nashville, that they're, they're calling a meeting Monday to try and reappoint me here. But, you know, the question is if the Republican supermajority will seat us back here. So, again, they, they are trying to usurp and undo the will of our voters, of my community. Um, none of these people who voted for expulsion live in my community. Um, they all live in, in different districts, and they've silenced the voices of District 52. 78,000 people in my district don't have a representative right now because of this extreme attack on democracy. We have members in the legislature who've been guilty of sexual harassment, who weren't you know, expelled, who've been guilty of, of crimes they had not expelled. But for standing with our constituents and calling for the end to, to these proliferation of gun laws, we've been expelled. Are you going to pursue any legal recourse for this expulsion? I mean, I definitely, I definitely am. I've talked to counsel before, and we've been talking tonight because it's unconstitutional. There was a violation of due process, and there was an undoing of our constituents' voice. There's so many constitutional concerns. That's why the nation and the world are looking at what's happening to Tennessee because this is such an extreme measure that we, we that's unheard of. And if it can happen to Tennessee, it's sending a signal that it can happen in other parts of America. Kind of ironic, just as he was saying that. There was a BBC breaking news about a shooting in Kentucky. Yeah, but what was in reference to that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, right that yeah. was breaking news yeah. about the mass shooting. Yeah, it, we have more mass shootings. We have them every day. Every and day. No we, we Just some break, make the news and some yeah. do not. And, and, and we, it's unfortunate. And, yeah, that was taking, I don't know, a hammer to kill a fly or, you know. Right. I, I'm I trying just, to think of the appropriate slogan for or Well, I, I just... Prism. You know, with Martin Luther King and, and, and his being him being slain in Memphis, and, but his, mm -hmm. his call for us to be nonviolent and to, you know, and, and it, it's, you know, 2023 now mm -hmm. and still. And still, you, you know, authority. Pe people who were trying to, who were, who were demonstrating nonviolently mm -hmm. were expelled. You know, so but the and these are two very articulate men. These two I mean, justices. I mean, it's interesting that the, the the leader of the the Tennessee legislature said that they were using bullhorns in in the in the House seat, but they never showed a video of it. It's just quote his word that they were doing. Well, that. they did do it. There are videos of them using a bullhorn. They what did, happened, but they, that was in response to their mics being cut off. Yeah, and they went to demonstrate with the people that were the students that were in the building demonstrating. Right. They wouldn't let them talk about it. So let's I, I want to hear from Justin Pearson, Representative Justin Pearson or well, ex representative Justin, Justin Pearson. Pearson. He just speaks for a few minutes now and uh, let's listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Representative Gloria Johnson and her attorneys, who they too are seeking to expel right before uh, I speak and before they work to expel me, uh, which I expect to happen too. We are losing our democracy. This is not normal. This is not okay. If you look at what it takes to expel a member, what it should take, most of the times that a member in the Tennessee state legislature have gotten expelled in the last two times in particular, one, the guy committed sexual assault against 22 people. The other committed bribery. We broke a house rule because we're fighting for kids who are dying from gun violence and people in our communities who want to see an end to the proliferation of weaponry in our communities, and that leads to our expulsion. This is not democracy. This is not what it is supposed to look like, and everybody needs to be very afraid and very worried that there are people in positions of power who are using and wielding that power to expel people who are duly elected to their seats. 
We came here to fight for our constituents. We came here to lift up the issues of people who are suffering. Six people died in Nashville at the Covenant School. Three were nine years old. But instead of focusing on that, Representative Jones, Representative Johnson, and myself are being expelled from the State House because we said we cannot do business as usual. No one should be wanting to operate as though this is not happening, as though we are not living in a gun violence epidemic in the state of Tennessee. And the solutions that are being offered is actually to reduce the First Amendment rights of people who speak up on behalf of their constituencies, who speak up on behalf of people who are tired of the guns, who are tired of seeing legislation being passed that lowers the age for you to carry, tired of seeing legislation being passed that says you don't need a permit, tired of legislation being passed that says if we give teachers guns, that's somehow going to fix the problem. People are tired of these non-real solutions to a real problem that we are suffering from. I've lost a classmate this year from gun violence. My mentor died last year from gun violence. We are dealing with a gun violence epidemic, and the resolution is not to, to silence the voices of people who send us here to the people's house to speak with them and for them. It is to make sure we do just legislation. It's to make sure we fight for red flag laws. We fight for good storage laws. We fight to make sure that this is a democracy and maintains its democratic principles. But that's what's being lost today. And so every Tennessean needs to be very concerned that we are not in a democracy. And across the United States of America, there has been no House members who have ever been expelled for exercising their First Amendment rights in a peaceful protest. This is a first in American history, and we are losing our democracy to white supremacy. We are losing our democracy to patriarchy. We are losing our democracy to people who want to keep a status quo that is damning to the rest of us and damning to our children and unborn people. It is no coincidence that the two youngest black lawmakers in the state of Tennessee and one or two women are on trial today. That is not accidental. This is what happens when you lose democracy. This is what we are fighting against and must stand up against as legislators and as people and as citizens across this country. Because it's starting in Tennessee, but it won't end here. How painful has this last week been to be a member of this body and instead of talking about those dead children, dead people, to be focused on maybe something that none of you expected before? No, it is painful to be a member of this body because of the silences that the members of this body take. The silence on gun reform, the silence on actually doing things that protect communities and make us safer, the silence about expanding health care access, the silence about doing things to ensure all children have equitable educational opportunities, the silence about the lynchings that are occurring in our state due to police brutality. We are tired of the silence that is going on in this place. And the reality is there are some people who are silent. They're dead. There are three nine-year-olds who will never serve in this General Assembly, who will never be able to march, who will never be able to protest, who will never be able to raise their voice about this issue. There are three folks, 60, 60, and 61, who are just going to work to serve children who are dead because someone with an assault rifle went into the school and shot 152 rounds. What reason does any reasonable person have to have an assault rifle? They're only intended to kill people and police officers. And yet, we have folks who are beholden to the NRA, folks who are beholden to gun lobbyists like the Tennessee Firearms Association, folks who don't care about the children that we've lost, don't care about the classmates we lost, don't care about the people in our communities that we lose every single day when we turn on the news, because they rather support a status quo that kills us. Wow. He's a very effective speaker, very effective. I mean, they tried to silence these two young men, but what they did is they lifted them up to the world right. to see the leadership that they can provide. Let's, let's, let's hear now from Justin, uh, jo I think it's Justin Jones. Mm -hmm. I think we just have a few minutes for, uh, just, it's less than two minutes of him speaking. I just wanted him to, to hear him speak on this issue. I mean, moving forward, this, this is setting a precedent that any member who voices dissent or opposition can be expelled from the legislative body. This is very unprecedented in Tennessee, um, and this has never happened in our history. But what the nation is seeing is that th we don't have democracy in Tennessee, and that if we don't act, um, we, we have some very dark days ahead. And so we have to respond to this um, with, with mass movements, uh, nonviolent movements. I will continue to hold them accountable and demand action, because this is not about me, but this is about trying to silence and expel the movement that we were trying to, to amplify on the House floor. You said today that this doesn't seem like America to you. Now, this is, does not seem like America. To expel voices of opposition and dissent um, is a signal of authoritarianism, and it is very dangerous, and I hope that as a nation watches that, that we that we 
we put this, this light on Tennessee to say that this should sound the alarm across the nation that we're entering into very dangerous territory. You have two of your colleagues in there who are still going to face questions today. What would you say to them, your other two members of the Tennessee Three? I mean, we're in this together. That we, The three of us, the Tennessee Three, we stand together. So I'm going to the balcony to go support them. Um, you know, I can't be on the House floor right now. So I'm going to go to the gallery and, and, and stay for the um, hearing because we, we are in this together. And it's, it's so important that we represent, you know, we're multiracial, intergenerational. We represent Memphis, Nashville, Knoxville. We stand united and the people across the nation are paying attention to what's happening because this is not the end. But what they did was signal that that if we don't act, we, we, will, we will lose our democracy. Today was a signal that we have lost democracy in Tennessee and that we are on the path toward authoritarianism. Absolutely right. This, this is another step down the line towards authoritarianism. And if you can't protest, if you can't talk, you're being silenced. Right. It's, it's, it's a really... Uh, They're on a slippery slope, the Republicans, and they're hoping right. people... It is. It is the entire Republican Party that, it is. that they have to take a look at themselves and see really, you know, do they really believe in our democratic institutions? Or do they use our democratic institutions, institutions as a tool to promote their own personal, uh, their own personal uh, cult? Mm -hmm. You know, at this point, and you know, yeah. and probably down in Tennessee, they thought, oh, they'll never, nobody will ever elect two young black legislatures, so they don't like the world being rocked. Right. So it says, oh, democracy is fine as long as our world doesn't get rocked. You start rocking our world, we're gonna right. swat it, it down. Yeah, we have to, you know, I think I want to echo what uh, was it Justin Pearson said about, you know, there's no reason for an AR-15 or, No, there's no reason there for weapons any assault of war. Weapon. These are weapons of war. I don't think people yeah. need howitzers either, but no, they can have them. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's one of those things that uh, I'm very grateful that I live in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts where we have it's very strict gun law. Yes. You know, we have, you know, uh, not that there's not violence in our communities, but at least, you know, we, we are trying to restrict the use of That's assault weapons. weapons. Yeah, and uh, I think we need to do that nationwide. It's been done before, and it's proven to be, be effective. Effective. Till the, until that assault weapons ban lapsed, deaths were on the decline. Yeah, multiple, I mean, multiple mass we have to look our grandchildren in, in children in our communities, we have to look them in the eye and, and say that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you're safe mm -hmm. and having, you know, and not have to go through those drills anymore. That we have a community that values life more than it values weaponry. And uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I just, you know, I was so moved by these two young individuals. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time reading this book on tyranny and 20 Lessons from the 20th Century by Timothy Snyder. And we're witnessing right now mm -hmm. that, that the, slow, the ch chipping slow. away of our democracy. And uh, let's hope that these two young men succeed, you know, even though they've been put down, that just like Martin Luther King, King was you, put you, down. You, he, he, he rose above, you know, his words still ring. They ring. do. And we have about six seconds left. So remember, the power is still with the people, hasn't gone away yet. No.